So how does a programmer get to be meeting the CEO? I won a competition. The president can't get Mr. Garrick on the phone. And you got the golden ticket. It's good to meet you, Nathan. It's good to meet you too, Caleb. Can we just get past the whole employer-employee thing? Cheers. In many ways, this building isn't a house. It's a research facility. I want to talk to you about the greatest scientific event in the history of man. Are you building an AI? Hello. Hi. I've never met anyone new before. Have you? None like you. She's incredible. The challenge is to show you that she's a robot and then see if you still feel she has consciousness. Do you want to be my friend? Of course. Will it be possible? Why would it not be? Have you never been outside this building? We could go together. Did you program her to flirt with me? Do you think about me? If you lie, I will know. No. Lie. Maybe she's pretending to like you. Well, why would she do that? Do you think I might be switched off? It's not up to me. Why is it up to anyone? You shouldn't trust Nathan. You shouldn't trust anything he says. I think it's the next model that's going to be the real breakthrough. Well, what do you do with the old one? You have to help me. One day the AIs are going to look back on us. Upright apes, all set for extinction. Is it strange to have made something that hates you? What were you doing with Ava? but I really like Donald Gleason. And isn't his American accent here adorable? Just when I thought he couldn't get any cuter. Yes, definitely, both Donald Gleason and Chris Pratt are part of this new wave in Hollywood of alternative heartthrobs. Guys who are totally sexy, but non-threatening. And then Donald Gleason's hotness is even more subversive than Pratt's because he doesn't have those abs. But believe me, He's no less hot, perhaps I think in some ways even hotter, and that makes him perfect for this movie. On the one hand, Donald Gleason is totally believable as a computer programmer, and one that has a lot of innocence, but still also intellectual curiosity. I love that he asks, did you program this robot to flirt with me? And the way he delivers that is just really well done. But that innocence is key, because I, most of us would think this was a very creepy situation. But Donald Gleason is able to sell us on the idea of this guy is like a kid in a candy shop or more accurately, in Willy Wonka's tech factory. Uh, but then on the other hand, he has that hotness about him, which really sells this potential romance with this robot. Every, I guarantee you almost every woman in the audience will be like, this is so awesome, that robot's so lucky. I mean, I'm telling you, Donald Gleason has a lot of potential as an actor and maybe even a movie star. Now, the other two cast members here are also very good, and I'll mention them in a moment, but I think the most important thing here, besides Donald Gleason and him being so well cast in this role, and also, this is a great role for his career because it plays up his strengths, but the talent behind the camera also gives me extreme confidence in the film, and that's Alex Garland. Now, you might not know the name, but you certainly know the work. He started out as a novelist, and he transitioned to the movie business almost entirely thanks to Danny Boyle, who adapted Garland's novel The Beach with Leonardo DiCaprio, Rose. You might uh, remember that film, I'm sure you do. Uh, and then he had Garland become a screenwriter for him on 28 Days Later, its sequel 28 Weeks Later, and then also Sunshine. And those are all very good low-budget sci-fi movies. And so low-budget sci-fi movies are tough to pull off because what's tricky about them is that they can't rely on special effects or big action sequences, so they have to have a good story. And I think robot special effects, though, by the way, must be coming a little bit more affordable because we're seeing so many AI stories, uh, especially in the low-budget uh, area of filmmaking. We had Automata earlier this year with Antonio Banderas and also The Machine uh, out of the UK. Uh, this is a, a UK film, and this is actually the UK trailer, by the way, because it's so superior to the US trailer. I hope that this is representative of the film and not the other trailer, 
but uh, that's why I chose to show you this one. So even though uh, they're all playing Americans, uh, it is from the UK. So low budget films, uh, sci-fi films have to have great story because there's no special effects to rely on. And sometimes you can see them kind of chomping at the bit saying, you know, I wish I had a bigger budget and I wish someone had invested more money in this script and that's never a good sign. These films need to be designed to be low budget. I think Alex Garland's very good at that. In fact, he's not just three for three, he's four for four, because this is also the screenwriter of Dread, the Carl Urban Dread that so many of us love so much and wish that more people loved so we could finally get a sequel. So I'm so happy for Garland that he's not only continuing to work, but he's making his directorial debut here. So I have tremendous confidence in him as a talent, uh, but also as someone who can execute a low budget sci-fi film uh, without making you feel like you should have had more or the film needed more. I would love it if this was a great little gem of a movie like, say, Roman Polanski's Ghost Rider. That's not a sci-fi film, but it reminds me of something that was just perfect at the level that it was at. However, not a lot of people saw Ghost Rider, and I hope more people see this movie because it just looks so good. And as I said, the other talent's very good. I'm becoming a big Oscar Isaac fan, thanks to The Two Faces of January with uh, Viggo Mortensen and Kirsten Dunst. If you haven't seen that movie, you definitely should. It should be on maybe even on uh, streaming by now. Uh, it had a very limited release and even hit... Um, uh, on demand before it hit theaters, but it's a very good movie. He's very good in it. I didn't like Inside Lewin Davis so much as you might recall, but his performance was good. Uh, but I think he's really coming into his own as, a, as an actor. He's also in Star Wars, by the way, so I guess uh, they already had a good repartee on set when he and Gleason showed up for work. Now the actress here is uh, Alicia, hold on, I have the name down here, uh, Alicia Vikander, and she was in A Royal Affair. You might recall that was nominated for Best Foreign Film just a few years ago, and it got her on Hollywood's radar. So you're going to be seeing her in a lot of films coming up. She looks a little like Amelia Clark, though, from Game of Thrones, and at first that's who I thought this was. Uh, but she's in the upcoming Seventh Son, The Man from Uncle. Uh, let's see here, Tulip Fever, that was originally going to go to Scarlett Johansson, that role. So she's got a lot of interesting projects coming up, but she looks like she's doing a very good job here. And the special effects are really quite well done. As I said, it's interesting to see what people do with special effects or visual effects when they, as they become more affordable. Because uh, this looks quite convincing. This is some of the best uh, you know, robotic, robotics I've seen with a character in a low budget film yet. So this looks just tremendous to me. It looks very exciting and I hope it gets a good US wide release. I, I uh, reviewed the trailer for Predestination which I thought looked really, really good, but it doesn't come out here until January. And many of you have already seen it in other parts of the world. And, I'm eager to review it. I've gotten a few requests for my review since I like the trailer so much, but I can't because it's not playing here yet. And, and this will open here, but I hope it gets the attention it deserves. With two Star Wars actors, I hope it gets some publicity money behind it. But what do you think? Are you as excited about this as I am? And are you more excited now that you know Alex Garland is involved uh, and the, there's that Dread connection? Maybe if he succeeds enough here, he can use that clout to get Dread too. And also, what do you think of Donald Gleason? Do you like him as much as Chris Pratt? More than Chris Pratt? And I, uh, of course, I hope to hear what you think of the special effects, etc. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review, and you can check out some more episodes right now.